Hey, everybody. You're about to hear a brief retelling of the movie Rumble in the Bronx. Enjoy the movie. A Chinese man named Chi Yong has flown to New York to attend his Uncle Bill's wedding. Chi Yong marvels at Manhattan. Except his uncle's store is located in the Bronx, a dangerous gangster neighborhood. Kyung's father was a famous kung fu master. He followed in his footsteps and became the champion of the martial arts in Hong Kong. Kyung saw the simulator and couldn't resist kicking the wooden dummy. He was clapped by an enthusiastic Denny, a neighbor boy in a wheelchair. Kyung gave him his console, which made him very happy. He has no parents, only an older sister. Bill shows his nephew his grocery store, he's going to sell it today. Kyung went inside to meet his uncle's future wife, but he was wrong. Bill fell in love not with a Chinese woman, but with a dark-skinned Bronx resident. Yulina, the next owner of the business, walks into the store. Bill advertised the store, it was the only supermarket for eight blocks. The future aunt praises Kyung's muscles and he wants to show off at the mirror. Except it's transparent and Alina checked it out too. Kyung went into the office and realized that the girl had seen his wiggling. The contract was signed. Bill invited Alina to the wedding to be held tomorrow. The groom rented an expensive antique limousine from a friend. A 38 Buick, he's going to pick up the bride in it. During the night, Kyung is awakened by the roar of motorcycle engines. Right under the windows, a punk gang is raging. Two gangs have arranged a competition. The girls must ride their motorcycles over parked cars, smashing them in the process. And in a row of other cars was an expensive limousine. Kyung panicked and realized that he had to intervene. He went down the stairs and covered the limo with his body. Because of this, the girl in red lost, just as the police arrived and dispersed the punks. Kyung met Elena again at his uncle's wedding and offered the girl to help her with the store this week. That way Bill will have a quiet honeymoon. During a light exercise, Kyung heard a report about a robbery. $7 million worth of jewelry was stolen. The newlyweds went on a trip and the apartment was left in Kyung's possession. As he was handing Elena the papers, the store was swarmed by goons. One of them sipped juice from cans and stole some chocolates. Alina is not going to turn a blind eye to this, but in response to her demand for payment, the gobnik smashed the can on the floor. Alina asked the Chinese buyer for protection, but the villains were from the same gang. Then Kyung took over and was immediately surrounded on all sides. Angela pulled out a big knife. Alina was frightened and began to apologize, but the fight could not be avoided. In the end, all the criminals were beaten, Angela's nose was broken, and the Chinese man received an additional flogging. Alina was at a loss for words at what she had seen, for the locals Kyung instantly became a hero. He worked until the store closed, a spark between him and Alina. Kyung helped the girl close the blinds and went home with his purchases in the hot neighborhood. When he saw some miscreants dragging the girl into a back alley, Kyung threw a trail and pretended to be a police officer. The victim of the attack was rescued, but she immediately kicked her rescuer in the balls. It was a trap and the hero was hunted with bats. After beating up several attackers, Kyung climbed over the net and ran down the narrow alley. But soon he came to a dead end. There was nowhere else to run. His path was blocked by dozens of punks. Angela was just going to shoot him, but Tone suggested having some fun first. The Gopniks emptied glass bottles out of trash cans and wrapped rags around their bats. In this version of baseball, the broken bottle walls shower Kyung with shards and injure him. Some of the bottles fly right at him and there is no way to block them. The wounded Chinese man fell to the pavement. Angela wanted to finish him off, but the ladies were against it. An altercation between them led to the Kapota scoring on Kyung and the bloody man was left lying among the splinters. The gangster Nancy turned out to be Danny's sister, and not the best, she can stay away from home for days, the kid told her about Kyung, a great guy who gave him a console. The boy complains that his stroller cushion is worn out, he needs a new one and Nancy promises to buy it. Covered in blood, Kyung managed to get to his driveway, Danny said it was their neighbor and Nancy decided to help him. 
The man woke up completely naked, Nancy undressed him and treated his wounds. The girl herself supposedly went to work, and Kyung went to the store to help Lenny. But he was hunted again by the punks. Kyung runs away, and the punks chase him, smashing everything in their path. The poor guy hides in a parking lot, but the thugs with bats keep up with him. If possible, Kyung knocks them out one by one. When he was pinned to the edge, the brave man climbed to the roof of the parking lot, just climbing from floor to floor at the top he hid in a car with balls. The owner of the car and the balls didn't like it and gave the Chinaman away. The Gobniks thought it would be fun to push the car off the roof. Cheong managed to escape at the last moment. The chase continued, the exhausted tourist was again cornered. Angela offered to let him go if Kyung would kiss his ass, but he whipped the bandit with a torn off antenna and decided to take another desperate step. After jumping from one building to another, no one dared to repeat the trick. The robbers found buyers for the stolen diamonds, but something went wrong. T the dark-skinned bandits were shot and their car was involved in an accident near Kyung's house. The punks were just hanging out there, they stripped the wounded of their gold, and Angela spun the briefcase. This is where the criminals in suits drove up and shot up the cars. Angela found a bag of diamonds in the briefcase, he was being chased, the gobnik tripped over Danny's chair and stuffed the jewelry into his pillow. The big guy took Angela at gunpoint and Kyung quietly dragged the chair into the apartment, but the punk was lucky, the police were circling the house and they were all arrested. Kyung took Denny home, the boy was very happy. His sister bought him a new pillow, the bandit hides to avoid being seen by the neighbor. But Denny's words about how much he loved her moved her. She went out and apologized to Kyung, the kid was surprised that the two already knew each other, the old diamond pillow was under the couch. The scumbags in white tiger suits had to be let go, they weren't wearing anything. The cops let Angel go, too, to put him under surveillance. During the night the white tigers returned to the house and scoured the entryway, they introduced themselves to Kyung as FBI agents and gave their business card. The Chinese moved to the club where Nancy works as a dancer, this is where Tony and his men showed up. Nancy is his girlfriend and right away she sat down to talk to Kyung. Soon they were spotted by one of the goons and told the man in charge. The couple had to flee from the club, they escaped on Nancy's motorcycle. The girl decided that she liked King better and kissed him, but she had to pay for it to Elena, whose store was torn apart by punks. Tony asked her where she can find Kyung. While the punks were partying in the store, the white tigers throw two of them in the trunk and kidnap them, but only Angela knows where the pebbles are and he gets on Denny's tail. When the adults moved away, he threw the kid out of the gurney and took away the pillow, but found nothing inside. While questioning the punks, one of them was thrown into the crusher and what came out the back was in a black bag. Kyung arrives at the vandalized store, he learns that it was him they were looking for for hooking up with the girlfriend of a local gang leader. Alina is disappointed in Vruga, and Kyung decides to take revenge on the punk and asks Nancy to bring him to their lair. The enraged Kung Fuist was going to pile on the criminals, but Tony just pointed a gun at him, but when Nancy approached, he decided to deal with the enemy with his fists. Punk was unable to counter the Kung Fu champion, and was soon beaten. The enraged Chinaman began to handle the rest of the thugs. Kyung was on the verge of getting injured many times, but his agility and speed helped him to avoid danger. And when he got his hands on the piece, the punk started to fly off one by one. The fight was stopped by Tony shooting the air. He recognized that Kyung had won. The Chinaman hopes that the next time they meet, they will not fight, but sit down and drink tea. Here, one of the kidnapped with a bag of mincemeat dropped into the den, and if they don't return what Angela stole, so will everyone. Kyung suggested getting the FBI's help, which is how he accidentally ratted Angel out to the White Tiger Gang thugs. Blondie was shot in the leg and confessed to hiding the diamonds in Danny's gurney. The bandits broke into the apartment and gutted the new pillow, no diamonds inside. Kyung got a punch in the stomach for it, and Danny said he knew where the jewelry was. He pointed to his sister's costume jewelry and got punched in the face. At the same time, Kyung realized where the diamonds were, but he didn't give them back and beat the bandit with a crutch. Kyung wanted to punish the thug for beating the child, but he could not take the Chinese's blows, so Dennis threw him a wrench. 
Xiang spilled the diamonds. The bandits got a call from the boss, but it was Kyung who answered the phone, offering to trade the jewelry for his friends. Kyung sends the kid to school and stops by Alina's store, where renovations are in full swing. The room looks like new. Kyung asks the girl to hide the stolen diamonds somewhere. A couple of pebbles she would like to take as compensation. The man in charge drove up to the store and asked Kyung to go down to the sales floor. Nancy went to the bathroom, almost stealing a handful of diamonds. When Kyung came down, he saw a bunch of chains strung all over the supermarket. He tried to warn Alina of the danger, but she refused to come out. The truck pulled all the chains at once and the building collapsed in seconds, like a house of cards. The ruined girl was left standing with her pants down in the middle of the street. The boss called again, he said a meeting place. He should have the diamonds in an hour, this time Kyung called the real police. The cops put a wire on Kyung and gave him one pebble to show to the bandits. Kyung's job is to get them to talk about the murders and robbery. The meeting was scheduled at a restaurant on the pier, the mustachioed man checked the pebble, Kyung promises to move the rest after his friends are released, he made a mistake and mentioned the nickname of their boss, they guessed that the Chinese might be wearing a wire and took him to the boat garage. So there was a microphone hidden in his hair, the boss gave the order to kill Kyung and the hostages and didn't care about the diamonds. But Kyung is in no hurry to die. He fought off the bandits and hid among the garages, but got stuck between the walls. The bandits were distracted by a cop, but it was more important for him to put a cigar in his mouth and he was shot. Kyung is worried about his friends and decides to act on his own. At the same time, the bandits took hostages and hijacked a hoverboat. Kyung also manages to jump on it at the last moment, but he falls off after being caught by a rope. The boat was pursued by the police, the bandits shot the helicopter and nearly crushed the fishermen. At the beach, they also didn't slow down and drove onto dry land, nearly crushing dozens of people. Kyung saved the little girl at the last moment, but he was lucky that there was sand underneath him. He jumped on the speedboat, which was already on the road and rammed into the bus, the boat demolishing one car after another. Kyung flew off of it and almost got hit by the truck. Not spared the killer boat even a Lamborghini, he also stopped by a concert of rockers. The cops don't know how to stop the hovercraft monster, then Kyung stole a huge serrated sword from a museum and got into the Lamborghini. After tearing down the doors, he placed the blade on the outside and sliced open the airboat's cushion on the fly. The Machina destroyed a few more stores and finally came to a stop. Kyung climbed inside and wounding one of the bandits, found out where the hostages were being held. Soon Tony and Nancy were freed, and Kyung got a chance to get revenge on the White Tiger boss and rode him and his guards in a patched-up speedboat.